Huge sequoias rise out of the earth, often climbing hundreds of feet into the sky and weighing hundreds of tons. What is the process that creates these huge biological monoliths? Where does the matter that creates their mass come from? The earth from which they rise? The air that surrounds them? The rain that falls on the forest? And what provides the energy to build them, year by year, molecule by molecule? Experiments by the 17th century Dutch physician Jan van Helmont indicated that the soil in which a tree is grown contributes little to its total mass. Van Helmont planted a seedling in a container, carefully weighing the soil in the container before planting the seedling. He then proceeded to care for the seedling for five years. After the five years, he weighed both the seedling, which by now had become a small tree, and the soil in the container. During the five years, the mass of the tree had increased 75 kilograms, while the weight of the soil was nearly unchanged. The only substance that Van Helmont had added to the container had been water, so he hypothesized that it is water that provides for the increase in mass that occurs in trees and other plants as they grow. As we will see shortly, Van Helmont was only partly correct. Nearly a hundred years later, Scientist John Priestley performed an experiment that indicated that plants give off a gas essential for combustion, oxygen. Later, the Dutch scientist Jan Ingenhuis noted that plants only give off oxygen if exposed to light. Even later, scientists discovered that trees and all other forms of plant life, in fact, all forms of life, were made up largely of molecules that contained carbon atoms. Where did all these carbon atoms come from? Most soil has little or no carbon, and water certainly has none. The only likely source was the carbon in the gas carbon dioxide, which is one of the gases that makes up the Earth's atmosphere.